Hey, well, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this TechSoup hosted online discussion. I'm so excited because we rarely get to feature an executive director. And so today we're going to be talking with Abina Patel Minhaj and talk about how Ituity Cares rapidly launched and scaled social impact. So I'm so excited. And also Whit Godin is here today with us. Listen, I'm getting too excited. I gotta get, I gotta get into this and let you know what's going on. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer here at TechSoup. Before we get started, I want to let you know if you're new here, welcome to TechSoup. Um, for those of you who are new, you know that TechSoup, or you may not know that TechSoup leveraged the power of smartphones, internet connectivity, and training it, and a lot more. If you've never been to our website, there's so much more. We try to help communities to leverage the power of technology to serve their community to do better. And today's speaker is going to share her story of how she launched and scaled social impact in her community. So before I get started with the webinar topic, I do want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Right now, everybody's on mute. So in order to communicate with us, you can type in the Q&A, use the Q&A feature, type your questions, or feel free to type your questions in the chat room and we'll do our best to answer all the questions. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get to the questions. This is being recorded. So the recording will be available within 48 hours. So any little nuggets that you missed, you'll be able to see this over and over again. So before we move on, I do wanna let you know that when you're engaging in the chat room, we always try to do our best to be courteous. So keep that in mind that we are committed that would like to share and bring our best foot forward. So I would like to introduce our featured speakers today. We have Whit Godden. He is the Director of Strategic Marketing at TAP Network. After he spent time at Apple, as a corporate trainer for the city of Los Angeles, he pursued a career as a community manager for the succession, excuse me, successful startup of Exploding Kitt Kittens. I told him I love that name. <laughs> During his tenure, he helped grow the company from a $5 million domestic brand to get this, a 55 internationally published brand as the branding and marketing director. So you need to know it, right? <laughs> in 2019, he decided to return to his passion of working with non in the nonprofit sector. He's been managing TechSoup and TAP Network relationships ever since. This helps nonprofits leverage their impact and their storytelling to accelerate their growth and impact. Next, we have Bina Patel Minhaj. She is the director of Vituity Cares. Uh, she's been with the Vituity Cares for over seven years. So I'm excited to hear all that she has to share. I'm sure she has many, many stories that she has to share. But in her role as executive director, she's leveraged solutions to create a multi-layer interdisciplinary, and I told her this is doctoral language, but I love saying it anyways, multi-tiered <laughs> interdisciplinary approach to assist, assisting addressing the social determinants of health and the impacts they have on marginalized community. She, she's a graduate of public health and, excuse me, let me start it over. She is a graduate of health policy and management doctorate of public health programs. You gotta get that right. Especially if you've <laughs> done that much of education, you gotta say it right. You gotta give her her, her props there. Um, from the University of California, she now resides in New York City. And Wit is gonna tell you more about her. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to Wit. Welcome Wit and Dina. Thank you so much, Aretha. I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Aretha. For, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today, guys. Um, you know, this is a really exciting and unique webinar platform and uh, sort of, uh, I guess, model than we've had before. So some of you may have heard my voice over the last year on a few TechSoup webinars, maybe not my face necessarily. There was one, one day uh, last year where I actually sang at a TechSoup webinar. So I'm very grateful to be able to have a, a friendly and um, more casual conversation with somebody that I really hold near and dear to my heart, uh, Bina, uh, who has not only become an incredibly wonderful client over here at TechSoup and TAP Network, but she's also become a really close friend of mine as well. And I'm just really grateful that she's taken the time out of her day to share her story of how she's been able to utilize TechSoup services to really 
um, amplify and grow the mission and the vision of Vituity. But before we get started, um, for some of you who may not know what TAP Network is, um, TAP Network is TechSoup's marketing technology partner that strives to empower organizations for good. So essentially, your vision is our mission. So today, what we're going to be talking through is sort of a success story of one of TechSoup's clients where we sort of stepped in and we partnered with Bina and the rest of her team to really help accelerate the growth of their organization. So before I get ahead of myself, um, again, my name is Whit Godden. I am the strategic uh, marketing director here at TAP Network. I also manage our relationships specifically with TechSoup uh, through designing and developing all of our service products and, and um, as assessment tools. Um, and I also manage many of our relationships with the clients that come through TechSoup directly into TAP Network. And I wanted to kind of give Bina an opportunity to introduce herself um, and talk a little bit about her experience and her background at Vituity Cares Foundation. Thanks, Wit, and thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really excited to be here. And like Wit said, um, I am the executive director of Vituity Cares. Vituity Cares is a new foundation started by Vituity, which is our parent company and a uh, large healthcare solutions company. Um, a lot of physician staffing, um, telemedicine, kind of all the healthcare solutions under one umbrella. Vituity Cares was um, a passion project that came out of Vituity um, in the middle of last year. And um, it's really driven by our experience working in communities and seeing how the healthcare system really, um, really does not meet the needs of those who need it the most. So we are a group of healthcare professionals, doctors, PAs, NPs, and we are committed to creating a more equitable healthcare landscape. And that's exactly what Vituity Cares aims to do. Awesome. Thanks so much, Bean. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So um, they're an amazing organization. The second I saw their, their preliminary mission, I knew this was someone that I was very excited to work alongside. Um, you know, I'm very passionate about, you know, social determinants of health. I have a pretty big background, deep background in healthcare clients as well. So it was almost perfect alignment when we were able to get together. But um, I just wanted to sort of wrap the structure of our conversation today for the attendees here. Um, so what we'll be discussing and we'll be talking through with Bina today is talking a little bit about how the services provided by TechSoup and TAP Network are really able to support their initiatives, as we mentioned in the title, to really scale and grow this social impact. It's almost, it's just been under a year, right, Bina, since the organization started. Mm -hmm. So we'll be touching a little bit on our support with their virtual gala, which took place last December. Um, the overall strategy of their organization, both operationally to some degree, and how that operational strategic plan gets implemented both on their website and their social media. And I'm really excited because we finally have been able to get through some of the uh, the the muddy waters, I guess, as 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 anybody who started a nonprofit probably can experience. And we're finally getting to a place where we have a really strong foundation to drive some individual fundraising to sort of supplement the incredible work that Bina does day in and day out to find sort of the more corporate and partnership fundraising as well, which I'm sure a lot of you nonprofits out there are looking to, to understand and identify opportunities and ways that you can really leverage those individual relationships with your mission and your organization. But before I dive in too far, um, we have a very special video to share with you guys. So I'm gonna play this. Um, this was developed for the um, the first gala, which was sort of our entree, the catalyst that brought uh, Bina to TechSoup and her team to TechSoup and to Tap Network. Um, but I think this is a beautiful re uh, sort of encap it encaptures all of the reasons why Vituity Cares should exist today. So sit back and enjoy. Mm -hmm. What is the promise of America? Money, fame, votes, likes, retweets. If you ask me, the promise of America is fairness. But despite living in the wealthiest country in the world, our country still fails to provide for the families that deserve it the most. It shouldn't matter where you live, how much you earn, or who you are. Everyone should have equal access to health care. That's why most Americans aren't afraid of getting sick. 
they're afraid of not being able to pay the bill. So join us in this fight. We are committed to ending healthcare inequity, one heart, one mind, and one life at a time. Healthcare is a human right. Let's not allow unfairness to continue on our watch. Let's build a future where everyone has equal access and equal opportunity. Together, we can, we can change the world. Awesome. So yeah, so Bina, I mean, what an amazing video. First of all, shall we shall we uh, spill the beans at the beginning of this webinar? <laughs> you can that, spill the beans. Who is that very handsome man that was speaking at the beginning of the video there? Um, he is my better half. He's my husband, and um, he, I, uh, he obviously owes me for many things, but I was fortunate <laughs> to um, have him uh, do the do the video for us um and it was great because it wasn't like a big ass. you know this is um cause that we're both so passionate about um you know our families work in healthcare. his mom is a doctor his dad was a um kind of a community scientist and um we have seen how healthcare can work for some people and how it can really fail others and the discrepancy is really unfortunate and that's what we, we really want to do is bridge that divide Awesome. Yeah, he's a fantastic human being. I'm going to stop sharing just while we have a, a little bit of a more fluid conversation here. Um, so we're not getting all distracted by the fancy visuals that I created for the presentation today. But, um, but you know, before we dive into like the work that we did together and the work that we're still doing together, um, I would love to give a little bit more background in who Vituity is, how you guys do it. So I guess my first question, you kind of touched on this during your introduction, but Sort of what was the catalyst that truly prompted Vituity, right? This incredibly successful professional medical for-profit company, right? Um, what prompted Vituity to launch a foundation like Vituity Cares? Yeah, so Vituity is, um, it started off as a, as a staffing organization. We staff, mo it was started off as emergency departments and now we staff everything, what we call, uh, call under the acute care continuum across the country. Towards the middle of last year, it became increasingly evident that in the middle of the pandemic, in the middle of the Black Lives Matter um, kind of movement, it became clear that us as, um, working healthcare professionals within these communities had a bigger role to play in addressing the fact that healthcare fails so many Americans. And we see patients day in and day out in our departments. And there was so much more that we could be doing for them, but not something that we were able to do in traditional healthcare settings. The social determinants of health access to food, access to a safe environment, access to legal services, all these things that we know clearly affect someone's health were not something that we could do within a 30 minute visit. And mm -hmm. so our providers were always doing this type of work. You know, they were working with community organizations, they were going to different countries to volunteer, but Vituity needed a mechanism to do that. And that's really why Vituity Cares um, was created. It's a passion project of our founder who is um, Dr. Tomlinson. He's also the CEO of Vituity, but he always says that Vituity Cares is his main job and Vituity is just kind of secondary because he feels so, um, so committed to this cause as a black man, physician, CEO of a multi-million dollar company you know, he overcame a lot of obstacles to get to where he is. And he felt the obligation to help those um, from communities of color and who are, who are disproportionately disadvantaged to, um, to the same um, opportunities that he had to give back to them. So um, we have a really great group of leaders. Our board is um, truly committed to um, growing this cause and the foundation and Thankfully, we have Vituity um, and the resources and all of the kind of benefits that come with Vituity as kind of supporting um, sources, uh, resources for us. Mm -hmm. Except for the financial part. <laughs> except, <laughs> except for the financial part. <laughs> we still have to do all <laughs> and of the, the, fun, the fun fundraising and all of the social media <laughs> and messaging and 
you know, I think we'll get to that, the challenge of vituity versus vituity cares in a minute. But yeah, it, it's like, I, I, I commend you on your day-to-day -day work. I, I, you know, when we have our meetings, I'm just always blown away by how much you're working. Um, and I'm grateful that we're able to sort of help amplify as much as we possibly can over here at TechSoup and TAP. Uh, network. But I, I, I think it'd be really helpful for people who are attending today because, you know, when it comes to digital communications, website presence, messaging, strategy, fundraising, you know, they all have a similar skeletal structure to execution, right? But it's the application of that sort of skeleton into the, con the construct and the infrastructure of your organization that's really going to make or break those efforts. So, my next question to you is I want to give the audience members here today a little bit of insight as to sort of how your foundation executes its impact and vision. So like they can kind of understand operationally, how do you achieve these goals that you so eloquently stated just now? Did that come through or no? It did. You, uh, you, you froze it there for a second, but um, uh, um, you might have to repeat the no, question. Yeah, you, you froze yeah, right you, at the question. Sure. Can you explain how your foundation executes its mission and, and vision and impact? Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, we started uh, kind of with the the, the, that spaghetti technique. We went hard in a lot of different areas. Mentorship for communities of colors and students who are interested in STEM and healthcare related kind of um, professions. We went really, um, we went really strong with um, unhoused communities and creating opportunities for unhoused communities to better access healthcare, pop-up clinics within um, homeless encampments, that sort of thing. We also, um, a big area that of focus because we really work in a lot of inner city communities is um, addressing gun violence and safety issues. And then the last big, I would say, um, focus is that there was a really strong desire by our providers to give back to other countries who don't have the same resources as we do in the United States. So being able to do um, pop-up clinics and mission trips um, and things like that overseas, Tanzania, Honduras, and Mexico, Mexico have ever been um, our focuses right now. So those are some of our programs within each one of those. We have kind of a lot of sub programs, but um, what we wanted to do was try, try out a lot of different things where there were interests and then really figure out where we were having the most Im impact. And so I would say that the last couple months we've really started to hone in on the, the two or three big areas that we feel like by 2D Cares has the most impact and also the most resources to allocate towards those programs. Awesome. Yeah. No, it's it's pretty amazing what you guys are doing. And I'm really, really uh, feel uh, very special to be, to be a part of it. Um, so I, I Wait, wanna... can I just mention one more thing? I don't Please, know if I heard this, but but um, I, I think we want to encourage the audience to ask questions as they come up. And Aretha will just kind of oh, chime yeah. in when there's a question, right? Uh, yes, correct. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, if, we, if you guys could just ask questions along the way, we'll start to get into the nuts and bolts of sort of the work that we've done together, which may prompt some additional more strategic or logistic questions. Um, but yes, please feel free. We'll answer them throughout the, the, the presentation today. Um, and we'll, uh, Aretha will interrupt me as they come through. Um, and yeah, perfect. Awesome. Thank you, Bina, for reminding us of that. I appreciate that. Um, so I wanted to sort of, um, as we before we get started and tar tar starting to look at some of the projects that we worked on together, um, overall, like how has, you know, this is not a self-serving question, but sort of a self-serving question. How has working with TAP really helped you and the Vituity Cares board uh, sort of develop a stronger message and vision and communicate that overall in general? I will be completely honest. When we first started out, there wasn't a clear message. I, if I were to ask every board member why Vituity Cares exists or what does Vituity Cares mean uh, for, you know, what is our uh, our responsibility to underserved communities, et cetera, et cetera, everyone would say something differently. What TAP helped us do is really get organized. And it wasn't that this, the mission has to be the same for each person, because I think that 
it should be a personal kind of mission driven um the you know how we how we work with the foundation is different for every person so i completely understand that but we needed to move forward in a unified direction and tap help us put everything together um in terms of figuring out who we are what we want to be known for and how we want to move forward i would say those were the three biggest questions that tap kept reminding us kept reminding us and kept prompting us to think about as we created a marketing and brand strategy so really i couldn't i i, I mean i tell with this all the time i could not thank him more for getting us organized even you know it was i came on as executive director even after the foundation was started and um the board <laughs> the board was not always the easiest kind of entity to work with um to really kind of hone them in everyone was almost using the foundation for their own personal interests and that's fine but we weren't moving forward we were just moving in different directions and kind of diluting who we were and so i would say that what tap did uh, to us for us is help kind of concentrate our mission and I, I think that was just so helpful at, at that point in our infancy. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it was a really great exercise. It was a good exercise for myself as well, because, you know, I step into these relationships with our clients through TechSoup and constantly have to uh, sort of learn about how an organization does what it does and help them amplify and, and sort of how do we codify that message. And, you know, the very first project we worked on, and I think we can laugh to ourselves um, about this as well, was your virtual gala, right? So we started working with you guys, I think back in, in, in uh, mid-November was when our conversation started and you had this beautiful idea of this virtual gala auction to raise money um, for, for the foundation as it was brand new, like I guess at that point, maybe six months old. Um, so kind of tell me a little bit about the process before TAP Network and TechSoup Resources sort of was able to step in and support you guys. Yeah, so um, the, the foundation was created in July of last year and um, again, right in the middle of the pandemic, we did not have the opportunity to really do any until uh, that, that year. And so as kind of the season of giving came around, we realized that we needed to do some sort of last ditch effort to um, raise some funds for the programs that we're launching this year. And so um, much like everyone else in the middle of the pandemic, we tried to put together a virtual gala. It was very last minute, very kind of scattered and not organized, but, um, and, and our goals going into it were, hey, maybe we'll raise a few thousand dollars. Um, and uh, and then, you know, we were really hoping, banking on some corporate sponsor sponsorships and things like that. Um, luckily, the gala went, got, went so successful, was so successful. And I, I'm sure Wit will go through kind of some of the, the outcomes from that because because due to the pandemic, a lot of the corporate sponsorships, health systems that we were banking on, kind of donating some larger sums, they weren't able to do so. Um, but, you know, the healthcare industry surprisingly got hit really hard by the pandemic um, because volumes across the country were down. Uh, you know, you help, you kept hearing about ICU rates being out of control, but everyone else was um, really suffering. Emergency departments had like all time uh, low volumes, primary care, everything was really down. And so um, we weren't able to get the the donations that we had banked on. So I'm what you can go through kind of the success that this last dish effort had and how, you know, tap really was able <laughs> to come in and within three weeks, um, create a brand new market for us. You know, I, I think I talked so much about our the support that by gives us but in terms of um uh marketing support and support for kind of uh financial outreach. support we don't really get much you know yeah we don't really get much outreach um you know vituity cares or vituity is a physician group of over 3500 doctors but i'm sure a lot of you guys who are um subsidiaries of larger organizations know that vituity cares could not access those even even the email addresses of those people because we are a different entity so but tap had to come in and be like that's okay we can still you know there, there's still a way of marketing this um without banking on kind of that built-in community. 
Yeah, I think, um, thank you so much. I, I, it was such a great experience. Like, and one of the things that we, when you and I were talking about this again, that I thought was really valuable was not only did we, were we able to sort of work together with you guys and identify sort of what tools do you have and what tools do you think you had, but you couldn't use and then positioning and, and, and giving, um, implementing tools that I think you really needed, right? And identifying those. Um, and I think kind of pulling the veil, uh, like, pulling the veil behind or kind of opening the door to like the possibilities of virtual engagement. So uh, for those viewing here, like there was very minimal social media presence whatsoever for Vituity when we first started. Um, so we really stepped in and we had to accelerate a whole entire, um, essentially an entire event marketing plan within, as more, Bina said, 30 days. Um, and we were really fortunate enough to see some pretty exponential growth across those different platforms just within that month of working with them. Um, and we were able to also like see an, ex an incredible, um, you know, fundraising goal. Of, we, I think it was around $350,000 just in that one 24 hour period uh, through the silent auction, the live auction, and just the general donations um, of the attendees of the gala. Um, so it, it was a really interesting exercise. And I think it put both of us um, through a, uh, a personal and professional experience where we had a, a, a steep goal. Um, and I think we worked really, really hard to figure out what that looks like. Um, and I think part of this whole entire process leading into that gala, you know, we I mentioned before, we were going to touch on a couple different components of Vituity Care strategy and digital communications platforms. Um, the second piece that was part of this initial relationship was really driving the website development, right? We had your old website. Um, and we were trying to get something new out there because we were seeking donations and trying to showcase the work that you guys were doing um, in an appropriate and, and in an efficient way to, to sort of seek those, those partnerships, sponsorships, and individual donations. So as we kind of move from the gala uh, experience, which I think was our very first great success, you know, capitalizing on the digital communications and the digital platforms, um, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about your website um, and, and sort of like putting on our strategic brains, um, you know, how did you feel about the website before we started having our conversations in mid-November as we were preparing for the gala? Well, Bina, before you yes. answer that question, oh, yeah. I, I, I wanted to, I was going to try to jump in there. I was trying to jump in uh, because uh, Dr. Elizabeth King wanted to know, wait, do you work with small nonprofits? Um, you know, some people might see that number of 350,000. It's like, oh, I yes. can never raise that. So they want to know if you work with small nonprofits. That's a great question. And yes, we do. We work with nonprofits of all sizes. So, um, you know, I think Vituity Cares is a, is a unique situation. Um, granted, you know, I won't lie, like Vituity Cares is a fantastic client. They are actually what I would consider in our, in our, um, in our actual Rolodex, uh, sort of a, a mid-sized nonprofit from an operations perspective. But yes, we definitely manage and work with that. That was their fundraising goals, right? Um, but the work and the effort that we put into here, um, the, the contracts I would say, and the, the work that we worked alongside them is, is you know, medium to small nonprofit size uh, marketing strategy. So, um, you know, this is not something we're not looking at some crazy, uh, you know, marketing retainer over here. We're, we're really seeing an opportunity to work with an organization that has what, what how many people do you have on staff? Like three, two, <laughs> you know? Uh Wit, um, I'm a one woman show over here. Exactly. So the, this, while the, while the, you know, that was what I think that's why we felt the, um, the fundraiser was such a success, right? We kind of, we were able to capitalize on a really important topic and we were able to reach people who felt incredibly passionate about it. Um, however, you know, Vituity Cares itself is not a massive foundation. It's not a giant nonprofit. Um, and so like this is along the lines of, you know, your, I would say something along the lines of like your local library or maybe your local, um, you know, mental health or, or health equity nonprofit um, that's, that's helping support inner city youth or social determinants of health within your local communities. Um, so yes, we definitely work with smaller nonprofits. And um, if, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. I have um, our email at the end of the presentation. Good. And Bina, there's a couple of questions here for you. Um, first of all, you're getting lots of invitations to come and speak um, <laughs> and do work. Um, Dr. Elizabeth King, uh, 
she, she already asked a question, but Paulette wants to know if you would come to African countries. April wants to invite you to Nicaragua and um, Honduras to work with trafficking victims um, and heavy on the, I just, I'm sure this is um, gynecological, of course. Um, also, Deborah wanted to know when you did your foundation fundraiser, what was the foundation's total financial investment? When we did the fundraiser, what was the financial investment? Um, I think in order to put on the virtual gala, you know, secure the auction prizes, all of that kind of stuff, the entertainment, all in, we spent uh, close to, I would say $20,000 for the gala. That's not bad for your return. Mm -hmm. We were really, really, really fortunate to be able to during the pandemic again in in some ways we were fortunate because you know we were doing it at a time where a lot of um people were you know a lot of celebrities were able to do virtual things for a lot cheaper than they would be doing in in person we were able to um leverage just the fact that people were at home so the attendance was a lot larger than we probably could have had um in other uh, in other years and so in in some ways um uh, the pandemic <laughs> situation kind of helped uh helped us do this at a lower budget yeah that's great and deborah wanted to know um who got your auction items um so we worked with um a, a group called R and R Fundraising that secures. Um, they do. They they and they they were wonderful to work with. They were able to um, you know put to get put together trip packages for us: Costa Rica, Mexico, um, Hawaii, um, and they offer it to us obviously at a very 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 discounted rate, and we're able to auction them off and 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 still make a pretty good amount of money off of them. So the trips were a huge hit for the auction. Nice, nice. And she also wants to know how do you ex access celebrities who are willing to participate? You know. Um, I, from experience, obviously being married to um, my, my husband, who's a comedian, um, I will say that oftentimes it's just about asking. You know, a, a lot of these celebrities would be more than happy to put themselves on video or to um, send an, an autographed item. Um, and oftentimes the only reason that they don't do it is because they don't get asked or people assume that they would want thousands and thousands of dollars to do it. Um, I, I can just say from personal experience, you know, my husband does this all the time. It's just about asking, you know, going to their website, figuring out who is the, who is their manager or their agent or their assistant and, and, you know, putting in just a very compelling ask. And um, most of them, I would say, uh, would be happy to do something. It may not be, hey, I'll show up to your next gala, that, that sort of thing yeah. that may, you know, require some funds. But the fact that we can do so much pre-recorded these days, if it's like a quick shout out on social media or something like that, I think there are a lot of celebrities who'd be inclined to do that, um, to really kind of support the good work that's being done. Great. And I know you were trying to think of the information with R and R, but they're asking for their information, you know, for the trips. Um, if you could, yep. you know, find that. Yeah. And, um, Trevor wants to know. Oh, good. Witness is answering. Possible to meet one on one. A witness mm -hmm. answering that question. Great. So, yeah, that's it. So the questions are coming in now that other people ask. And Bayonne Trading LLC wanted to talk via audio. So Wit will put the information um, in the chat room after this. Perfect. Perfect. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, yeah, thank you guys for those questions. That's really awesome. I think, you know, these are some really unique, amazing things that we were able to pull off that gala. Um, and so, you know, the, as I was mentioning before, our sort of our second big project, you know, that we worked on together was the website, right? It was a little bit of a rough patch. So what I was asking you just before we answered a couple of those questions was sort of like, before we stepped in and before we started looking at your, your web presence, how did you guys feel? How did you personally feel? um uh about your website um i did not feel good about it i don't think that it was a good representation of who we were and i felt that when i looked at the website it was like vituity light and that was not what we wanted to be known for it when you looked at it it looked like we were a healthcare kind of company it um didn't resonate with the communities that we we're trying to really impact um and it was just really dry i felt like it was saying the same thing, but in a hundred different ways. I think you guys have all seen websites like that. You're like, 
you're saying the same thing on every single web page or every single page. And um, it really bothered me to send people who I was asking for money from to the website and they'd come back to me and be like, but what do you really do? And that bothered me because I wouldn't want to like give money to someone if I really didn't know what they did. And so, um, yeah, I didn't feel good about it. <laughs> yeah. And I think that was really helpful when we were talking a little bit about the strategy as well. Like um, part of the process, right, for us to work together was really identifying what your core pillars were, right? Uh, so we went through this exercise. We kind of had most of them kind of already articulated. And then we sort of took these pillars and we essentially, for those of you who are, are, are tuning in, this is what a general like sort of a, a, a very simple site map would look like. So um, Bean and I worked hand in hand into identifying a new site structure for the, the different components and messages that live across the website. And we aligned those with sort of the key goals uh, of sort of the what the organization is committing to do. So this is what the new website sitemap looked like after Bina and I sort of started to really work together from a, a messaging perspective. And you know, one of the things Bina that you and I have talked about as well is like part of your mission is to take action, right? It's it's very action oriented. It's this is a problem we need to solve today. Um, and your old website which you know you guys had built before we we started talking together sort of lacked that ability to take those actions right there were very minimal very few places where you could fill out a form sign up for a, a volunteer position make a donation um, and I, I think what we really were working to do was making this website not only really showcase the work that you do, which was also something very important that was lacking, um, but also how can we get people involved, right? Because, you know, Vituity, I think it knows, Vituity Cares knows this isn't a one man mission. This is a, this is a social, sort of a social movement, right? Um, that we're all that we're all working towards and so i just wanted to give the um audience members up oh, do we have a kid joining you back there <laughs> a husband i think i don't know <laughs> um, but i just wanted to give everybody a little bit of an insight as to sort of what bean and i were able to work on as far as like building out the strategic site map and mapping out the content so that we can properly um, sort of hit on those individual mission pieces and those overall goals and so this is just a very basic, and this is you know, where I'm gonna ask you a little bit about the design process. I think this is a big question that a lot of nonprofits have when we start talking to them about their website. What does the design process look like? How collaborative is it? Um, is it really about like your designers or what you guys want? How, how, does that, how did that process come about? Because you kind of see where this is the old site over here. And then this is the site that we were able to redesign and relaunch for you guys. So. Would love to hear from your firsthand experience about like sort of that branding facelift and, and overall web design process. Um, yeah, so I, I think that the process was really um, seamless in, in the sense that you had a good understanding of what needed to be done. Half the battle was making us understand that there were, <laughs> there were, there were big, um, gaps in um in in kind of our there are big gaps in the building blocks of who we were and so we literally had to go to the from the beginning again who are we what do we want to be known for what do we want to be known for who aren't we right like we can't do everything and um how do we want to move forward and so having wit guide us through that process was invaluable and um having that slowly be reflected in this new design was um was really um a, a kind of mind opening or like eye opening for me because um it came together slowly and we were able to as we built the website i feel like feel like we built our foundation you know um it, and it was just um, a really kind of a, a good clearing process for all of us. I, I mean, that one, the, the first webinar that you kind of, uh, or the first kind of presentation that you walked us through where we did that um, exercise, I think you might be showing it next um, about kind of who this we one? are and who, yes, yes. This yeah. was this was really, um, this was kind of, I think that pivotal point for me and for the entire board to be like, what 
is it? What is it that we do and how do we best reflect that on our website? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I think, you know, one of the things, my favorite part of working for TAP and working for, with TechSoup and working within the nonprofit sector is our strategy is collaboration, right? And I'm sure Bina, you can probably attest to that point as well. You know, we don't stand in the corner and direct our clients or direct our, the nonprofits we're working with and collaborating with and say, this is how you have to do what you do. No one does what you do better than you, right? But it's a matter of identifying the how and the who and the what and articulating that in a very confident, authentic, and consistent way, right? And sometimes you, particularly within the nonprofit sector and particularly with the mission you guys have, there's a lot of passion behind it, right? So there's a lot of, there's already a lot of energy and synergy around your statements, the way you use the terminology around your mission and, and the impact and the changes that you hope to see. But I think it's it was really great exercise for us to work together on really sort of distilling all of that into a sort of core functional strategic org chart. And I'm about to get to that in a second, uh, which is sort of, I think the aha moment that all of us, including the board had, when we were looking at how do we identify and outline your website presence, your social media presence. Um, so the first thing that we did, right, was we identified who are we and who are we not. Um, this is really helping us identify sort of What's the tone of voice? What's the overall messaging and how are we functioning within the conversations that we're having as Vitu Really Cares, right? And I think this came, this is that the, this is the separation between Vituity and Vituity Cares. If I can be, is that appropriate to say, Bina, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so we had the sort of more buttoned up medical professional versus this really social activist slightly irreverent type of um, messaging and then really building i mean this goes all the way to the strategic operations of the of the nonprofit of your foundation and you know working through your digital marketing your gala and your website presence would not have necessary we would not have gotten this had we not gone through those those steps right um and i think this was a really valuable piece to bring to the board um some clarity and some more certainty around who you guys are and what you guys do. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. <laughs> no, um, yeah, no, this, this was, um, this was a turning point and I feel like it just takes one or two pieces of collateral, uh, that makes sense to people to really give them the confidence to go out and fundraise with it. This was what our, our board needed to be able to speak confidently to who we were and what we do. And able they were able to take this to their health systems, their clients, their partners, and really um, brainstorm around around this kind of piece of collateral and, and speak to this in a way that people were bought in to our cause and wanting, wanted to partner with us on these activities. Absolutely. And I see Deborah asked um, how long this process took. So I'll answer that question. And um, I would say we probably got to this point, Deborah, in about, you know, in the whole project with Vituity Care is spanning all the way back to the mid November for us to sort of put our heads together and figure out exactly where we were. I would say this project here, like to get this roadmap finalized, was probably about three months. Would you say that's about right? It's about mid February. Yep that we landed on this that really accelerated the website development and our social media strategy. Um, I think mm -hmm. so it's about a three month project to get this sort of on paper. Now, also remember Deborah, Vituity started just under a year ago. So like if you have an organization and you want to put something like this together, there's probably components already existing it just needs a little bit of duct tape and some super glue and some experts to take a look and sort of help build out an org chart like this that can help accelerate and, and provide more value to your overall digital footprint, um, whether or not that's website, web, your website or social media strategy or email marketing strategy on, on sort of all of the above. So awesome. Well, I think like one of the things that um, I wanted to touch on, I know we're getting close to the end and I wanna leave it open for questions, which we're grabbing throughout the process here was 
you know, one of my favorite pieces about working for TAP, right, is we get to collaborate with you guys. And as I was mentioning before, when it came to the website and working on the strategic oversight, it was a really strong collaborative effort. Um, but I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about our social media approach and sort of the relationship that we have and how we kind of execute on that. I'm actually gonna stop sharing for the moment so we can kind of just have more of a conversation here. Um, so Bina, tell me a little bit about, like we have a whole team, right? We have a whole team here that's helping come up with storylines and building your social media assets, um, pivoting and constantly looking at how can we optimize and improve your social media strategy. So I'd love for you mm -hmm. to kind of give your firsthand experience of working with TechSoup and TAP Network on executing the month to month strategy around your social media. Yeah, so um, I would say that before we brought you guys on, it was very willy nilly in terms of how we were posting, what we were posting. Um, and there was no really consideration on who is this really targeting, right? Like, is this just for other healthcare professionals? Is this for just, is this just gonna go out into like, the internet universe and kind of just like, you know, get dissolved in some way. Um, but what, what, you know, you and Lacey and the team helped us do is think about again, what is our online persona and um, who really are our targets on social media? You know, as much as we're, we're, we're trying to address issues within communities of color and the, the, those who have been disproportionately affected by um, um, healthcare in, inequities, that's not the purpose for our social media presence, right? We weren't, we weren't directly, that wasn't an intervention where we were directly able to give them kind of what they needed. It was, we very quickly realized that we needed to use our social media presence to raise awareness, to fundraise, to make other healthcare professions and um, other foundations and um, other communities, community partners aware of what we're doing and how they could tap into us as a resource and how we could tap into them as a resource. And so we started really tailoring our post and um, uh, to really to that market. And so I think that was a really, really um, kind of good exercise, um, you know, just because of the celebrity and ent entertainment that we had from the gala, we very quickly got a a good number of followers and we became increasingly important that in order to retain those followers we had to put out things that were relevant and that were engaging and um and you know the celebrity appeal has was very quickly going to go away and I, i'm proud to say that you know from the gala until now we've retained all of our followers like i was i was really afraid that after the gala and after people kind of forgot about about um, the celebrity aspect, we'd kind of go down and um, we've, we've been able to retain the followers and that's really just exciting. And to me is a testament to the fact that we're putting things out there that people are interested in seeing. I think yeah. now we're pivoting to another um, kind of uh, crucial kind of uh, step is now that we have them engaged, how can we get them to be more actionable? How can we get them to donate? How can we get them to become mentors for our programs? How can we get them to partner with us? That's the step that we're working on right now. But yeah, I, I feel I, like that engagement is finally there. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I still see messages come through Facebook and Instagram, and especially through the website of people reaching out like, I wanna participate, I wanna volunteer. And we now have these mechanisms and we're publishing the content out there that I think is really impactful. And, I, and I'll share this with everybody. Uh, Bean and I had our, our, our regular meeting yesterday that we reviewed this, but normally we would be reviewing um, our quarterly analytics. And it was really exciting, which you'll see now tomorrow, Bina. Uh, she hasn't seen it yet. So I'm, you are all finding out right now that, you know, since the gala and through the Q2, just the content that we've been able to put together um, really has grown the engagement and grown the audiences as a, as a whole. So it's pretty exciting. And it, it's all a testament, again, back to that collaboration piece, right? Um, you know, I think it's really important that you work with somebody who's passionate about what you're doing. And I'm, I instantly clicked with you as a friend and as a colleague and as a, as a professional relationship. Um, and I think that collaboration, that just like openness and genuine sort of energetic inter, inter, interchange really makes what we do really work well. And the rest of my team over here, I know is really passionate about what is happening over at Vituity Cares. 
um, which kind of leads me to our next big project that's sort of in the works right now. Um, and sort of now that we've got, you know, we have the really successful gala, we had this brand new website relaunch that I think just really gives a whole new look and feel and understanding as to what Vituity Cares does. We really were able to kind of peel back the layers of your internal organizational structure and strategy and integrate that into a really powerful and sort of impactful social media presence. Um, we're now looking finally at some, you know, more individual donorship fundraising initiatives. And so I wanted to just share with, with the folks here um, on our call about sort of what we're looking at doing, um, which is the day of giving, right? So Bina, I, I don't know if you wanna share a little bit of background to sort of like what this project looks like and sort of how we're gonna be going about it. Um, and I can add in anything else as well. Yeah, so, um, you know, I would say since from the gala until now, we haven't done any big uh, fundraising pushes only because I was, maybe this was an insecurity of mine, uh, but I really wanted to spend the first six months of the year launching all of the programs that we had promised that we were going to launch. Um, and I am proud to finally be able to say that they have all been launched. And, and now we can go back to our donors and say, your funds are being used and they're being impactful. We have some data to show about how, how well the programs are, are going, um, the impact that they're having on the communities. And we are gearing up to um, figure out what the ne next life cycle of these programs look like. And in order to do that, we need to kind of start that second round of fundraising. Um, and so, uh, you know, Wit and I and Lacey decided that um, we should do you know, there's always the Giving Tuesday, which is later on the year, but we want to do a day of giving around the programs that we're actively working on. We are putting on pop-up clinics for homeless encampments. We're putting on health fairs for um, inner city high schools. And um, they have gone so well. These pilot projects have gone so well that there is this desire to... Um, to scale them across uh, other communities. And we now are able to concretely say that for X amount of money, we're able to do this. And so we, we want to, um, we want to kind of pull out, put out that call to action. Can you help us put together 10 more um, pop-up clinics? Can you help us put together 20 more um, community health fairs? And um, we're hoping that we can engage people through our social media and some email marketing um, in order to um, really kind of raise some money for the, the next six months, I would say. Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be really great. You know, we're we're putting together too like a whole media kit for your staff and donors and boards and influencers as well. Um, but I think it's going to be. I'm really excited about this project, and I think it's going to lead into some really fun stuff for the fall and the winter um, as we kind of head toward the next mm -hmm. gala as well. Um, but I did just want to touch on Terry Miller asked a question about how often are we posting for Vituity Cares, um, and where have you found the most traction for for social me social FR. I'm not sure what you mean by social fundraising. That makes sense. Okay. Um, so there we go. Um, so for posting schedules, that's a really good question. Um, there's actually a digital, uh, digital marketing benchmark report that we released earlier this year. Um, I will make sure that Aretha sends the link out to everybody to that download. Um, and it talks a little bit about the data that TAP, so with TechSoup and TAP, myself, um, our agency, we put together a big giant survey. We surveyed a bunch of nonprofits. And one of the discussion points we talk on is how often should you post on your social media? Um, how often are other nonprofits posting? So we sort of are able to glean into what the nonprofits responded to. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, it really comes down to the data that you guys are able to collect from the platforms in which you're posting onto. So, um, we use a, a we use a, a a program called Agora Pulse that we use for publishing all of the content for our clients, and those involve and include some really robust analytics tools that show us what time of day is the most um, engaged time of day, so we can properly identify when and how often we should be posting based on the metrics that we're receiving back, right? Uh, the data that we're getting back from those posts. So. Traditionally, three to four posts a week is a pretty strong place to start, um, but you need to commit to that, right? Commit to those regular and consistent postings. Um, another big important piece 
it's not all about quantity. It's also about quality of posts, right? So um, I use this with my clients all the time. I'll give you guys part of my secret sauce as a strategist uh, is I, this term content fatigue. Um, if you're posting the same kind of content over and over and over again, your followers will stop paying attention as you show up on their newsfeed because they're just going to go, oh, Vituity Cares is asking for more money again. Oh, Vituity Cares is asking for more money again. Like they'll, it will just automatically, their brain will just zone out if it's the same type of content and the same call to action. So in, in order to, um, to ensure some, some sense of diversity and diversification in your content types goes back to what Bean and I were just discussing is collaborating on that content calendar on a monthly perspective and, and working together to say, how can we keep this as engaged as possible? And we're still getting the end results we're looking for without asking the same question 15 times in four weeks, right? Um, right. So I hope that's so helpful. That was really good wit. So we have about four minutes and I just want to do some quick fire questions. I noticed there's some in here that Bina probably can type some answers to. People like, you know, saying you use orange, you like the orange the best, you know, some, you can answer those questions. I'm going to scroll in here. Um, uh, Eric from Orlando wanted to know how do he get assistance for funding for his nonprofit? Is that something you can help with? Good. I'm glad you put your information in. Please take a screenshot of that. Tap, um, um, tech soup at tap network. Please take a screenshot of that. So can you answer that question for Eric? Um, how does he get assistance for funding for his nonprofits? How can you get assistance for, well, uh, let's do this. If you could reach out to us at this email, I'd love to get a little bit more information. It's a pretty specific question. Um, so I would love to kind of follow up in a one-on-one -on -one conversation if that makes sense, Eric. Um, Bosman want to know uh, about celebrities. Do they respond to cold, cold calling? I would say that um, getting to the representative is usually the best way to um, to get in touch with them. Um, obviously, if you are, are really active on social media, you can try, but it oftentimes doesn't doesn't get them. Um, and oftentimes their social media accounts are managed by someone else. So I would say um, going to their website, figuring out who their representative is, and usually there's a link to um, getting in touch with them. That's generally the best way. Okay. Um, with Dr. Elizabeth wanted to know, how do you feel about Hootsuite? Hootsuite's fine too. Um, it, I think it's just a matter of what you have a personal preference for. Hootsuite's great. Um, I know some other people use Sprout. Uh, we've just found that Agora Pulse has a really uh, great listening tool that we're able to implement as well. So it's not only um, scheduling everything out, but we can actually ask Agora Pulse to listen for certain phrases and listen for certain hashtags. Um, that may not be directly tagged into, for instance, Vituity Cares. So one of the hashtags that we use for Vituity Cares is hashtag healthcare heroes, right? So we're able to listen to that hashtag. And if other people are using it and there's a relevant conversation for Vituity to engage in conversation, we can go ahead and tap into that conversation, even though Vituity Cares wasn't directly tagged in it, if that makes sense. Right. So I would take a look at the different capabilities. Um, yep, sorry. sorry. Last question, the seed of life. Um, what is it true that social media is a very tricky, tricky aspect of marketing? Well, actually, I think she was agreeing that it is true, but yes, she is right. Oh, okay. Is, okay. Yeah, okay. No, no, it's yes. totally fine. Okay. No, but you are Thank absolutely you. right. Yep, Thank it is a know. very, it's tricky, but I think at the same time, it's, it's this, it's the art part of marketing. You know, we always say uh, marketing is an art and a science, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that social media can be just as much the art part and like really coming up with creative um, and impactful storylines and content pieces and, and um, strategies is really important. But before I sign off, Aretha, and before we wrap up and say our thank yous to everybody for joining us, I did just wanna call this back out again. You know, we provide some really amazing services as well as educational content, blogs, webinars. We have a course on our 300 level course for website management that's gonna be launching in August next week, next month. Um, so be sure to check that out. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out directly to uh, us at techsoup at tapnetwork.com. Um, and Bina, I apologize. I was gonna actually have them um, get your email because I'm sure some folks are gonna find some of the stuff that you do incredibly valuable for your um... yeah absolutely um you know the easiest way is probably just going to our website by 2 cares.org and um, sending me a message through there um sorry i'm trying to a answer some of these questions 
this is not working. Um, but yeah, just email me. Um, in terms of our staff, someone asked um, what our staff size is. I'm the only employee of the foundation. We have several volunteers, but right now we are very dependent on volunteers. And I'm hoping as we grow, we will be able to um, uh, kind of grow our paid staff as well. Wow. Well, this was amazing. I learned a lot. I'm sure there were lots of comments. People were saying, this is great. Um, Whit and Bina, thank you so much for being here today. I love stories. So thank you for coming to share yours, Bina. Thanks, Teresa. Thank right. you Thanks so for much. having us. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.